الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح للأمة وكشف الله به الغمة فتركها على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك اللهم صلِّ وسلِّم وبارِك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت وسلمت وباركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وارض اللهم عن ساداتنا أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن الصحابة أجمعين وعن التابعين وتابعيهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين Indeed, all praise is due to Allah. We praise Him, we thank Him, we seek His forgiveness, we seek His assistance, and we seek His guidance. Whoever is guided by Allah, indeed He is guided. And whoever is left astray, for Him you will find no guide and no supporter. I bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship except Allah, the one and only. And I bear witness that Muhammad is His final prophet and messenger. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon Prophet Muhammad and upon his family and upon his companions and upon those who followed them and those who follow them till the day of judgment. Allahumma ameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us in the Quran بَعْدَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ حَقَّ تُقَاتِهِ وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ O oh, you who believe, attain taqwa, be aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as is worthy of Him, and die not except in a state of Islam. My dear brothers and sisters, over 1400 years ago, during the Khilafah of Umar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, it became apparent that the Muslims needed to have an official calendar. They needed to track the dates, to know the beginning, not only of the months and the days, but also of the years that they are in. As the state grew, and as the mail was coming back and forth, they needed to know when were these messages sent. And so Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, assembled the Sahaba, and he asked them for their advice. And some suggested that they could adopt one of the existing calendars at the time. The Persians had a calendar, the Christians had a calendar. But then eventually they decided that they needed to have their own calendar based on the lunar year, so that they can track the Muslim dates. And then the question became, well, what year should become year one? Where should we start this calendar? And some suggested the birth of the Prophet wasallam. Some suggested his death. Some suggested the time he received the first revelation. But eventually, Ali ibn Abi Talib proposed, and Umar and the rest of the Sahaba accepted. May Allah be pleased with them all that the year they should start this calendar is the year the Prophet ﷺ made the hijrah from Mecca to Medina. He made that migration from the place where Muslims were oppressed and they were not allowed to practice their religion or express it in public to the place that welcomed them and brought them in as part of the community and allowed them to establish the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth. And so till this day we take that Hijri calendar. And a few weeks ago was the beginning of yet another Hijri year. So it is an opportunity for us to remember, to reflect, and to look for new beginnings. Just like the Muslim Ummah had a new beginning when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made that migration. The beginning of the year also signifies that we are in the month of Muharram. 
And the month of Muharram is the fourth month of the four sacred months. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran, إِنَّ عِدَّةَ الشُّهُورِ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ اثْنَا عَشَرَ شَهْرًا فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ يَوْمَ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ مِنْهَا أَرْبَعَةٌ حُرُمٌ فلا تظلم ذلك الدين القيم فلا تظلم فيهن أنفسكم that the count of the months according to Allah or with Allah is twelve four of which are sacred the day that He created the heavens of the earth that is the day that the heavens and the earth were created the count of the months had been twelve and four of them are sacred and that is the correct religion so do not wrong yourselves during these months. It is imperative that during the months of Ashur al-Hurum, we are extra attentive to our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَلَا تَظْلِمُوا فِيهِنَّ أَنفُسَكُمْ Do not transgress against yourselves during these months. And while the ayah did not name these four months, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a hadith in, in Sahih al-Bukhari named them specifically. He said, إِنَّ الزَّمَانَ قَدْ اسْتَدَارَ كَهَيْئَتِهِ يَوْمَ خَلَقَ اللَّهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ السَّنَةُ إِثْنَا عَشَرَ شَهْرًا مِنْهَا أَرْبَعَةٌ حُرُمْ ثَلَاثٌ مُتَوَالِيَاتٌ ذُو الْقِعْدَ وَذُو الْحُجَّةِ وَالْمُحَرَّمْ وَرَجَبُ مُضَرْ الَّذِي بَيْنَ جُمَادَ وَشَعْبَانٌ The Prophet ﷺ in this hadith said that the time has turned back to the day as if as it was when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens and the earth the year is 12 months, and four of these months are sacred. Three of them are consecutive. Dhul Qa'da, Dhul Hijjah, and Muharram, the one we are in. And the fourth is the month of Rajab, which comes before Ramadan. You have Rajab, Sha'ban, then Ramadan. So Rajab, Dhul Qa'da, Dhul Hijjah, and Muharram. And so, as we said, these are sacred months. Ashur Hurum, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us that during these months, فَلَا تَظْلِمُوا فِيهِنَّ أَنفُسَكُمْ Be especially careful to your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not transgress against yourself. Beyond that, there is no you know, special significance to the beginning of the year, of the Hijri year. No religious significance, no special prayer, no special ibadah associated with the year. But the month of Muharram also has Ashura, the tenth day of the month. When the Prophet ﷺ arrived in Medina, he saw that the Jews who were living in Medina would fast that day, the 10th day of Muharram. And so he asked, why are they fasting? And they said, This is the day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave victory to Musa over Fir'aun. And so the Prophet ﷺ said, نَحْنُ أَوْلَى مِنْهُمْ بِمُوسَى فَصُومُوهُ We are more related to Musa than them, so we should fast that day in honor of Musa and in honor of the victory that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to Musa and his people. And so the Prophet ﷺ fasted that day and he fasted the following day and he said, if I live to the following year, I will fast the ninth and the tenth and it became a sunnah that we fast that day, and the Prophet ﷺ told us, whoever fasts the day of Ashura, he will get his sins forgiven for the previous day. This is now behind us, it already passed, but inshallah we will remember it for next year. But what I wanted to do in this khutbah is reflect on that incident, and reflect on the legacy of Musa السلام, the great Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we know, he is among the ulul azmi min al rusul. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala named some prophets who have a higher status, including Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, including Isa and Musa and Ibrahim and Nuh. And Musa is the most mentioned prophet in the Quran by far. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is mentioned by name maybe four times in the Quran. Musa is mentioned by name over 130 times in the Quran. His story was covered in detail from his birth and all throughout his life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he tells us stories, it's not for entertainment. It's because there are lessons to be learned. 
and there are benefits for us. And the example of the prophets are examples for us to follow. As we know, my dear brothers and sisters, as the Quran tells us, the children of Israel at the time had been living in Egypt, and Egypt was ruled by the pharaohs, the Fara'ina. And the ruler at the time received a revelation, not a revelation, but a dream, that one of the children of Israel is going to destroy his kingdom, is going to destroy his power. And so he responded the way every oppressor and every tyrant responds. Someone from the children of Israel is going to destroy me, then I'm going to kill all their children. And so he proceeded with executing every male-born child to the Israelis or the children of Israel so that none of them could rise to destroy his kingdom. But what he failed to know is that he is dealing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so when Musa was born, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired his mother to cast him in the river against every inclination that any mother would have. You know, sometimes when we see images on TV, we see these migrants, you know, going in the, in, in the small boats in the sea with their small children. Some of us ask, you know, what, what were they thinking? Why would they endanger the life of their children? But what this story tells us, it's because the alternative is worse. The mother of Musa knew that if she kept her child with her, the soldiers are going to come. And they're going to click, kill him and slay him. So Allah inspired her to cast him in the river. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delivered him safely to the household of Fir'aun. The exact place where he will eventually destroy the kingdom of. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delivered that child to him. And he was raised in the house of Fir'aun. That is the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the ability of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Despite any tyrant, despite any oppressor, despite any power in the earth, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills something, He makes it happen. And eventually, as we know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after Musa grew up and he was given the message and he was commanded to go and deliver the message to Fir'aun, and Fir'aun rejected the, mes the, the message, not only that, but he claimed to be God himself. Qala I am your highest Lord. There is no God other than me. That's what Fir'aun said. And that was his end. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Musa and his people to flee from Egypt. And Fir'aun and their army ran behind them or rushed behind them to get to them. And as we know, they reached the sea and they were trapped. The sea in front of them, the army behind them. And the people with Musa, like most people, panicked. What's going to happen now? Where do we go? There's a sea in front of us. There's an army behind us. Surely we will perish. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the scene. فَلَمَّا تَرَاءَ الْجَمْعَانِ قَالَ أَصْحَابُ مُوسَىٰ إِنَّا لَمُدْرَكُونَ When the two groups saw each other, the companions of Musa said, they will surely catch up to us. And that meant slaughter. That meant death. That meant the end of them. So they were scared. But Musa alayhi salam responded, like a believer responds in the times of hardship. قَالَ كَلَّا No. I have my Lord. إِنَّ مَعْيَ رَبِّي سَيَهْدِينَ And He will guide me. He will find a way out of this hardship for us. My dear brothers and sisters, how many times is our faith tested with hardship? And how many times we have that confidence that Musa showed? That no, as long as we are on the right path, as long as we are doing the right thing, then we should trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and trust that He will find us a way out just like He found a way 
for Musa and his people. فَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَى مُوسَى أَنْ اِضْرِبْ بِعَصَاكَ الْبَحْرَ فَانْفَلَقْ فَكَانَ كُلُّ فِرْقٍ قَدْ كَالْطَوْضِ الْعَظِيمِ We inspired, we revealed to Musa, use your cane and strike the sea. And as soon as he did that, the sea parted, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us. And each part was like a great mountain. If you've ever been to the Great Canyon or any valley where you have mountains of rocks on both sides and then you have a river running in the middle, this was the exact opposite. Dry land in the middle and two mountains of water being held by nothing except the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the path opens and Musa and his people cross over and then those who were following them were tempted to go behind them. And we brought the others, the pursuers, near into that valley. وَأَنْجَيْنَا مُوسَى وَمَنْ مَعَهُ أَجْمَعِينَ And we saved Musa and everybody who was with him. ثُمَّ أَغْرَقْنَا الْآخَرِينَ And then Fir'aun and his army were all drowned. The sea closed on them with the power and the might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah tells us, إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَةٌ There is a sign in this for us. No one has a chance in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our only choice is do we want to be on the side of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or on the side of those who defy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا كَانَ أَكْثَرُهُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that most people will not believe despite these signs. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who are believers. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to live our life as followers of the truth, as believers in Allah, as students and followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The story of Musa, my dear brothers and sisters, just like the new year, gives us that hope of new beginnings. That hope that when there is hardship, when things are tough, it's never hopeless. As long as we trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we put our confidence in Him, He will find a way out for us. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us all and to allow us all to be among the believers. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على عباد الله وعلى من اهتدى بهديه وآله وبعد. إن شاء الله to conclude this خطبة I'm just going to remind myself and all of us of a few of the du'a that Musa used to say as the Quran described them to us in different situations. Again, we said his story was covered in details, and among this coverage is the du'as that Musa used to make. And the first among them is Rabbi inni zalamtu nafsi faghfirli. My Lord, my Allah, I have transgressed against my own self, so forgive me. Musa made this dua after he made a mistake. Our prophets are not gods, are not deities, they're human beings. And they make mistakes like all of us. And so Musa got in a fight with someone and he hit him, and as a result, that person died. And Musa made this dua, Rabbi inni zalamtu nafsi. I have sinned. I have made a mistake. I have transgressed. Faghfirli. How many times do we need to make that dua? How, do we even remember to make that dua after we sin? Or do we just, it's just another day. It just happens and we keep going as if nothing happened. رَبِّ إِنِّي ظَلَمْتُ نَفْسِي فَغْفِرْ لِي And then when Musa was told that a group was coming to hurt him as a result of that incident, he started fleeing away and he made another dua. 
Rabbi najini min al zalimin. My Lord, save me from the people who are oppressors. Again, we are in need of that dua. If we look around us in the world, there's so many oppressions, so many, so many, so much aggression, and so much abuse of power. And I'm sure all of us have been touched by it. And so we are in desperate need to make this dua for ourselves, for our loved ones, for the ummah, and for the nation. Rabbi najini min al zalimin. And then when Musa reached safety, another place, another town, an immigrant, if you will, a refugee, not knowing what to do, not having a place to stay, not having a job, he rests under a tree and he makes this dua. Rabbi inni lima anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqir. My Lord, I am in desperate need of your goodness. I need your help. I need your rizq. I need your sustenance. I need your guidance. How many of us, after losing a job, after changing, moving from one place to the other, after major changes in our lives, we didn't know what to do. We didn't know what the next thing is. We need this dua. Rabbi inni lima anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqir. And then, one dua that I love and that I make before every khutbah I give is when Musa was commanded to go and preach and deliver the message of Tawheed to Fir'aun. The same ruthless leader who has been persecuting his people, who has been pursuing Musa, Allah tells him, go to his palace and speak truth to power. Remind him of who's in charge. Remind him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the, his Lord and our Lord and the Lord over the heavens and the earth. Musa made this dua. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. As I said, I say it before every khutbah. My Lord, expand my chest, broaden my chest and make my affairs easy and untie my tongue so they can understand what I am saying. Before a job interview, before any major speech or a situation where you have to express yourself and it's important that people understand what you're saying. We need this dua. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wahlul uqdatan min lisani and then finally we conclude with this dua that Musa made. Rabbi ghfir li wa li akhi wa adkhilna fi rahmatika wa anta arhamur rahimin. My Lord forgive me and my brother and enter us into your mercy and you are the most merciful. We need the forgiveness of Allah. We need his mercy. And so we join Musa in making that dua. Rabbi ghfir li wa li ikhwani jami'an wa adkhilna fi rahmatika wa anta arhamur rahimin. My dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us in the Qur'an to send peace and prayers upon Prophet Muhammad. He said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِيِّ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت وسلمت وباركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معصيتك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون عليه ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقواتنا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم ارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين واشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين ورد الغائبين إلى أهلهم سالمين غانمين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وأقم الصلاة